have to remember is mine, yeah. and I said, yeah, no, the only name I have to yes, remember yes, yes, yes. is Jesus. And that, yeah. <laughs> so, whatever. Okay, I started that. All right, so we'll just start off with a few simple questions. Um, do you mind if I ask what your names are? No, my name is Sylvia Howard Nelson. Uh, could you spell that for me, please? Surely. S-Y-L-V-I-A-H-O-W-A-R-D-N-E-L-S-O-N. All right, thank you. And I'm Helen Tokoy Morgan. Would you mind spelling that for me, please? H-E-L-E-N-T-O-K-O-I-M-O-R-G-A-N. All right, thank you. <laughs> um, so what, what made you decide to come to Wasatch when you were younger? What, uh, what were the attractions to this place? Well, I lived in a little mining town called Schofield, and if you wanted to go beyond the eighth grade, you had to go someplace else. And since my parents were very uh, adamant that I receive an education beyond the eighth grade, they sent me here. Um, what, uh, what were the differences between Schofield and coming here? Like, I don't know, were there cultural differences? Were there, well, I mean, I know that you know, talk, you know, I grew up in a little mining town, so we had people of all kinds of different nationalities. Most, a lot of kids spoke a different language at home, so it was kind of a multicultural area. Oh, okay. But then, so when I came here, the big difference was that it was just all new and different and... It was a big school, and I went to school. That I, there were two people in my eighth grade. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> very small classes. Very small. <laughs> yes. And and tell tell them your background, your uh, and the, what you spoke at home. Uh, and I spoke Finnish at home. Oh wow! Both both my parents. My mother was from Canada, but grew up in a Finnish family, so she, her main her main language was Finnish when she was growing up, and my father was from Finland. And he came to make a bushel of money, and then he was going to go back. But he always told me he hadn't made that bushel of money yet. <laughs> and she's gone to Finland. And I've been to Finland twice. And I was fortunate because my father would never speak English to me. Uh -huh. uh, but he died when, he, when I was 22, so that's uh -huh. been an awful long time ago. So my first trip to Finland, I was really worried because I thought, I won't be able to talk to anybody, but it, you know, it came back, and so I, I've been there twice, and I managed well with the language. Wow, that's really cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. What about you, Sylvia? Where? Tell me um, about yourself. I'm a little farm girl from over in Emory County, right over the hill, east of you here, east of us here, and it's Huntington, Utah, and that's where I was raised. I wasn't born there. I, I came from a farm family. I still live on that farm. Um, I met my husband here. I came as an eighth grader. My father met people who had been here to Wasatch Academy, including Judy Parmley, who was a legislator for Utah for many, many years. Excellent woman. And so he wanted us to come here. So he died when I was nine years old. So my aunt was very wealthy. She owned half of Carbon in Emory County and some probably some of San Pete too because she had a lot of money and knew how to make money. Part of Salt Lake too. Yeah, and some part of Salt Lake too. Yeah, <laughs> true. But anyway, um, so anyway, she promised him before he died that she would send us kids to Wasatch. So there were three in my family. All three of us came here to uh, at the boarding school. We loved it. And uh, I really loved it. I was here four years. And my sister graduated, in, in, and my brother was here two years. He didn't like it, but that's okay. And 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 uh, so he loved. He went into the military, and and he enjoyed that. But anyway, um, I always have loved the Wasatch Academy and being able to come back for the reunions and things. So that's oh, why yeah. I'm here. And I lived in Finks three years, every floor. <laughs> yeah, and I lived in Alice Dormitory one year. And then, long story short, I went to my hometown to graduate. Oh, really? I met Glenn Nelson while I was here, and he was a graduate by then. Yes. He's <coughs> a senior so, freshman. Yeah, he, yeah. So anyway, uh, we dated here. He'd come over to see me and take me to the movies on Friday or Saturday night, whatever it was. You know, and then Wasatch Academy decided I was a problem. So if I wanted to date Mr. Nelson, that I should not come back. So I didn't. 
I went oh, home. Yeah. My mother said, you will graduate before you get married. I said, yes, ma'am. And so <laughs> I did. But I always have loved Wasatch Academy. And I've met so many wonderful people here and had such great experiences. So. Um, have you kept in? Have you kept in touch with any of those people? Yes. Oh, for sure. And I do every chance I get, whether they're older or younger too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've lost a lot. Yeah, and we've lost a lot. But we're hoping to see about ten or twelve of us yeah. today for the 1958 class reunion. Oh, we found definitely. a few more, but we I couldn't talk to them. Come, no, they couldn't come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, were there many foreign students when you were here? Mm -hmm. Quite a few. Yeah. And there were also town students. And so we kept in touch with many of them also. So uh, it's yeah. been wonderful. We had a lot of um a lot of kids from national parks because that that they didn't have high schools there, so their parents sent them here. Oh yeah. So yeah. And different mining communities, yeah. both in Carbon and Emory County sent a lot yes. of kids here. Uh, and to uh, and Eureka. <coughs> yes. And Tooele and Mm -hmm. um, lots of mining towns. For sure. Um, so, I'm assuming you had a roommate when you were here? Mm -hmm. I had like lots them? of roommates. She had lots of roommates. I had loved my roommates. <laughs> yes, I had, I had uh, two roommates my freshman year. Uh, the one gal, I can't I think she left. And, uh, then I roomed with, uh, oh listen, I, I had chemo and, and I, my memory, I have these little holes in my brain and so when I go to think of a name they all drop in those little holes. Oh, yeah. So, but, but then my last two years were with Barbie Williams and she's here today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we keep in track. We keep in touch with her. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad you her story. It's way good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has a really good story. I'll make sure to talk to her. And I had three, let's see, two roommates or three the first year I was here because they were older than I was and they wanted to move out. I was just a little eighth grader, you know, and they were who wants they, to live with the eighth grader. You know, <laughs> so anyway, but I got to know them. And then the next year I had a roommate and we, we had good, we were great friends all all year long, Sally Schnur. Oh, and Sally Schnur? No, Sally, Sally Schultz. Sally Schultz. Yeah. We can't then, find her. And then the next year, I had three roommates, Walida Voorhees, Janet Teese, and Sally Schultz, and we lived upstairs at the dorm over there, so we loved yeah. it. We couldn't find any of those. So did you guys mess around a lot in your dorms? Did you, I don't know, did you mostly yes. just study? Oh no! Well, we studied. <laughs> we we sometimes had to get up earlier or crawl into the top of our closets to, so they wouldn't see our light to do our homework. And That's true. Time. Yeah, I you know. But. Actually, I was a pretty good kid. Oh yeah. I honestly was. I, was. I could have been really. There could have been times when I was really could have got into trouble and got you know done things. But I decided I didn't want to. I did see what happened to a lot of other people, though. My husband wasn't pure while he was here, but that's okay. That's a whole <laughs> nother story. We both well, married. Yeah. We both married uh, guys from, from the same class. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. my husband went here too. Oh. But I didn't marry him for you know. He graduated, and then I married him many years later. <laughs> Had to keep them waiting, huh? <laughs> yeah, there were, there were some kids that didn't want to be here, so they did everything they could do to get kicked out or stuff. Oh, why wouldn't they want to be here? Oh, just they because wanted to go home. they wanted to do something else, you know. Um, they didn't want to go to school. Yeah. Yeah. But I was, I really became a people person here because I love people. So. Um, tell me about your favorite memory while you were here at Wasatch. Oh, I have so many. Go ahead. I, you, I have so many, I can't even remember. <laughs> okay. I, I, go ahead. Go ahead, I don't know. Well, my, one of my favorite memories was getting to, acquainted with people. And the other one was I learned how to sing while I was here. I learned that I could sing. I sang in the choir. Oh, and yeah. you know, at the old Presbyterian church, yes, we were required to go to the worship service on Sunday morning. Yes, we were. I... I, we were required to have Bible study. Yes, we were. 
Yes, I thank one of the God we for have. that now. Because of that, I learned to love Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I have, because of that, I do teach Bible study still. I have done for many years, and I have taken Bible study for 42 years now. And so um, that was one of the things that I didn't know at the time, but that was one of my favorite things as I look back now. Something you fell in love with? It was just one of the classes that I gained so much from. And I, I really, but you know, the diversity of the classes here too. It wasn't offered at public schools at that time. Anywhere. Well, I don't know because I didn't go to public school. Oh, because well, I could, I went, uh, but any of the high schools around didn't have the classes and the diversity offered because by the time you graduated from Wasatch Academy, you already had gone through a little bit of college. You just didn't know it. Oh, really? At yeah. that time. You know what I mean? Yeah. They didn't give you credit. Mm -hmm. well, well, you know, I, I uh, had the bookstore for three years and that was probably one of one of my, it was work, but it was probably one of my favorite things. And that was the lucky thing about that was that I got to know everybody in, in school, you know, that, you know, everybody, not everybody got to know everybody that as well as I did. Yeah. And, uh, and then just, just getting to know and living with the people and living with, learning to live with other people was a big thing. And learning how to, how to, I mean, we had institutional jobs, so you had you learned how to clean, you learned how to do lots of things. Right. Uh, so I think that was one of my family. Well, and you know the other thing, one of my favorite teachers was our physical education teacher, and it was probably her first year teaching. But you know we had so many different things. I mean, she taught us fencing, she taught us golf, she taught us basketball, she taught us volleyball, she and taught us badminton. Was. Judy Rinker, mm -hmm. but uh, and kids don't just, they don't get that kind of opportunity anymore. No, 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 not really. In fact, I don't even know that they have physical education every year. Um, I don't know. I think they, they do. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. My kids, I I don't. My kids didn't. I don't believe. No. But they were very involved in a lot of other things, and maybe that counted. They were they they were cheerleaders and dancers and. So maybe all of that counted somehow. Or they didn't complain about PE class because they, they knew they had to go. I don't know. <laughs> so it sounds like, um, what, what did you say her name was, the coach? Judy Rinker. It sounds like you really liked that teacher. Was yeah. she your favorite? She was one of my favorites. I had lots of favorites. Actually, we, we got her into the class of 1958, and she's been to many of our class reunions. Yeah, she has. She oh, unfortunately really? couldn't come this year. Yeah. She lives in Texas. But I get a Christmas card from her every year. Yeah, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so it sounds like you both were very involved. Did you play any sports? Yes. We did. I tried. I think we played everything. I did. We used to play. You know, at, at that time you couldn't have, you couldn't have girls' teams. You know, girls weren't supposed to play play sports. Uh, so we would do it like in a. Uh, it was kind of a. a field day sort of thing that you had with other schools because we, we, we used to have basketball and we played Mount Pleasant or we played North San Pete, we played Snow College, we played Orem. Did you play? Did you play? I did. I wasn't very good at those but I was excellent at track. Oh I wasn't very good at track but I, I, I like basketball I, yeah, and I, I couldn't shoot but I could guard. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> and tennis was fun to play. It's been kind of fun. I've, I've granddaughter who played basketball this year and it was kind of fun to go watch her as she improved. <laughs> but I have to tell you about one girl that was in our class that I have just barely learned that she is no longer alive. She died last fall. Her name was Lenora Dyer. She was from Arizona. She was Native American. She could outrun any man, any boy that we came, that Wasatch Academy had to compete with she could, they would take her to the track meets and she outrun every boy. She could sprint faster than anybody I've ever learned. No, no, she no. could also outshoot the Miss Basketball. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Really? She was excellent basketball. But she was fun and a sweet girl. She was, yeah, she was yeah. lots of fun.
Um, so what did you guys enjoy doing on your weekends? I know that you like to break the rules and go out with your boyfriend. <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, you had to go to church and you had to study yeah. and you had to get your laundry done. Yeah, you had to get your laundry done and do and, all that. And, uh, you know, I think you just, I just remember weekends being time that you had to catch up on everything. Yeah, that's true. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you. But would we go, did get to go to the show on. on we got to go to the movie. So I went with my boyfriend. We had to go to school on Saturday yeah. because and had Mondays off because we couldn't have the same day off as at North Sandpete because there was just too much conflict. And I think that was only in our junior and senior years. No, that was clear clear through. Was it? Yes. I don't yeah. know that part. Yeah. But anyway, yes, there were things fun, and Los Arch Academy always they always had something going on. Or we could go somewhere, but we also had, like, we I had to go to Miss Overton's uh, apartment and clean. She was my favorite teacher because she was the English teacher. Oh, she! I still and did. I, I, we had to clean the apartments if we oh, had yeah. a job. That was everybody our job. had a job. It didn't yes. matter who you were. You had you a job. You had to either do dishes. And, and every month it would had change. You had to, mm -hmm. yeah. You had to but I loved to go to her apartment and dust and clean for her. She had so many beautiful little things to dust, but I broke one, I felt bad, oh, but you dear. know how that is. That was the worst job But I in, Oh, that I job. loved it, I just loved her is why. Yeah. I, 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 I remember, I don't remember doing Miss Overton's, I remember doing Miss Barber's. But, uh, I remember one, one fun thing that we did, we went uh, camping, mm -hmm. uh, a whole bunch of us, this, this teacher took us camping on top of, uh, what, what mountain is it over by Clear Creek, the top is, highest one? I don't know. You do too. You lived in... She lived I lived in Clear Creek nine years didn't after you go that? Oh, you didn't go because that was our senior year. I didn't. It was, it, it was our senior year, but it's the highest mountain that's over there, and we camped right on the very top, and about froze to death. But you know, we, we saw the northern lights that night from there. Oh, really? Yeah. I, could, we could, I looked over, looked north, and I thought, I cannot believe, what, what is that? You know, is, is the world coming to an end? What is that? And it was the Northern Lights, which but was a very unusual On the weekends, thing. we were taken up to the cabin. And I don't even know if the cabin is in the same place because Wasatch Academy now owns the little ski resort that isn't open today that I noticed, you know, up on the, on the mountain. There's not a lot of snow up. out there, is there? There's no, hardly <laughs> any. It's sad. We are in a drought year. There's no doubt. But we used to have a canyon that was just, just, uh, west or east I guess east and it was really pretty to go up there there were a lot of maple leaves and it was beautiful up there and we used to spend we used to have overnight things up there all the time too we had a lot of activities mm -hmm. we had we had a lot of um, I was on the on the on the yearbook um, mm -hmm. I can't remember what all I did but we, we kept busy all the time so weekends were just the time to get your laundry done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't say it's too much different now. <laughs> um, so how has attending Wasatch, how, did, how has that affected your life later on? I think when I went to, I went to Brigham University with the first year after I graduated, and it was easy for me. You know, my roommates were all struggling because they had they had to write papers and all this stuff, and it was just really easy for me. I didn't, you know, it was, I didn't have a problem with it. And then I changed from there and went to St. Mark's School of Nursing, and they were, uh, they also sent us to Westminster College the first year. And uh, actually, school was fairly easy for me always. And I, when I was here, I thought I was not very smart because I was with all these smart, smart kids. And, but then when I got out on my own, I decided, I wasn't all that dumb. In fact, when I went, was going to Westminster, I got this little note in my box to go have my picture taken for something, and, and I, I told someone, what is this? I don't have any idea what this is. And, and well, I'd made the honor roll. I never made the honor roll here, but I made it at Westminster. <laughs> <laughs> what did you uh, study at Westminster? I was in nursing. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the nursing students from St. Mark's Hospital School of Nursing went to Westminster. And then I graduated from the University of Utah later. Oh, wow. In nursing. Yeah, they have a very good nursing program, don't they? Mm-hmm. Westminster still has a good, very good nursing program. In fact, St. Mark's, St. Mark's School of Nursing sort of uh, blended into uh, Westminster's program when they 
dissolve the hospital Westminster school. Westminster was Presbyterian based too. Yeah, it was oh, just really? like it was, it was at one time. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it yeah. it became not not Presbyterian sooner than Wasatch yeah. did. What about you, Sylvia? What did you uh, I don't know? How did Wasatch affect later years for you? Um, it affected how um, I was a little poor little girl from a farm and I was a little Mormon girl and it has affected my whole, Wasatch Academy has affected my whole life because I did learn the Bible here, I learned God's Word and I have wanted more 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 of it all my life and I still do and that's still affecting me and so that's the good part, that's why I want to go and have a tour of the old church building today and I plan to do that. <laughs> Somebody's got a key. I want to go see. I well, let me tell see. you those little windows that are round like this, and they have the three little places that are equal, the triune God. And that's what I want to see. But let me oh, tell you people. what this lady does. She belongs to the Historical Society. She's helped them write Amber Candy history. She has, um, she mends flags. She, uh, was president for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, I, I can't even keep up with her, well, she does so many things. And I don't want to take credit for all that, but I will take credit she for did. a couple of more things. Yeah. Okay. I, have, I have three children, and, oh, yes. and they are excellent people. I, I can say they're good citizens. That I thank God for every day. And, and my husband and I, and he has been very, um, He's, he's a farmer. He married me for the farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's a cowboy, you guys, and he went to Wasatch Academy. Yeah, he was a cowboy then, too, at heart. But well, I don't was, know. You he's a real cowboy, cowboy, cowboy. But anyway, he, but, but our children have, ver they have influenced our lives, too. But at Wasatch Academy, if it hadn't have been for that, that, they wouldn't have had the good, they wouldn't have been able to do some of the things they have because we encouraged them, we pushed them, and we knew how to do it. We knew how to encourage them and tell them, you can do it. And so that's the important thing is remembering. You don't, you don't sweat the small stuff, you just get on with life and know that there's something that if it's right, that you'll be given it Yeah. if it's right for you. And she wants. She has a son who is a Navy SEAL. Yeah. He just he just retired from the SEALs for the second time, after 34 years, and he went. He had over 450 thousand dollars worth of scholarships to choose from before he left high school because we applied for all these, mm -hmm. and but he did choose the Naval Academy out of the four, and. He missed going to the Air Force Academy by one little thing. Guess what they didn't get in time? What? The ACT test. Uh, You've got to be kidding, you know? And yeah. yet he already, he had his pilot's license before he had his driver's license. He is the most self-controlled young man, person in this life that I've ever met. And yet, and he still is. He comes, and if he wanted to fix that table, he would... Make sure that you took time to decide out, and he'd be fixed for it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just has this way about him, and he's just a fantastic young man. And he, like I said, uh, he's retired from the Navy SEALs after twice now. And I said, "Well, what are you going to do now that you're retreaded again?" He said, "Well, I don't know. If I get bored, I'll go back to work." <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I think one thing that Wasatch probably gave us yeah. was an appreciation for education yeah. and I think we really pushed our kids yeah. to go to school. Yeah. Both mine, well, my one Both daughter, my, daughter my, my one daughter graduated from college and is a school teacher. My other was a little bit of a rebel and she decided, she went to school for, she went to college for one year and decided she didn't want to do that. <laughs> she wanted to be a hairdresser so she went to hairdressing school and she didn't ever want to do hair again so then she went to massage therapy school and then she didn't want to do that again and then she found this job at this upper salon where she did both and she made much more money than my school teacher daughter ever did oh, yeah. <laughs> and loved it well it sounds like she found the right thing she did. and it sounds like Wasatch was the right thing for both of you it was oh it was
I think was. And I think especially coming from uh, a family where, uh, well, coming from a little town, a very small town, and not being around a lot of educated people, actually, or being around people who, who were educated but probably didn't speak the same language as you did. Uh, it was very good to come here and have someone who took you under, under the wing and, and you learned how to, you learned how to speak correctly. You, you learned to do all the things that, you know, you hadn't learned. We had many opportunities that children from the, just even from the local schools here did not have because, uh, like Latin. We yeah. wouldn't, I had Latin, I loved Latin. I should have taken Latin. But the thing is, <laughs> you know, you find what your niche, you find what your niche or your niche is, whatever, however you say those words. <laughs> but anyway, and I found mine. I can't do it anymore, but it's okay. I wish many times I had taken Latin, especially since I went into the medical field. But I took Spanish instead. <laughs> <laughs> How was the, I don't know, how were the language programs when you were here? Very good, very good. Uh, the Spanish program was taught by, by a person who spoke Spanish, was Spanish. Uh, in fact, we had a, a program, an exchange program between different Presbyterian schools. And I went to Manal, which is a Spanish-speaking school in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hmm. And, and that was because I went here. And, I, and my roommate went to, uh, oh, I can't remember the name, it, it, but it was, it was on the Indian Reservation in Arizona. And then there was one in San Francisco in Chinatown that we, oh, all, yeah. that we, that we exchanged with. Mm -hmm. How many languages does Wasatch Academy teach now? Um, let's see, they have Spanish, they have Chinese, French, um, French. French. Yes. any other languages? I think those are the three. There were four offered when I first came in the eighth grade. Um, we could take Latin, we could take French, Spanish, and then there was a German, someone who knew German too, and, and it was taught if someone wanted it, you know. So. Mm -hmm. And there, I think after we graduated, there was a full-time German teacher for a long time. Okay. But anyway, it was a wonderful opportunity that we wouldn't have had in a public school at that time. Oh, definitely not. The same applies today, you know. Yeah. You have so many more opportunities here. Amen. That's true. Um, I don't know. What, what was the craziest thing you did while you were at Wasatch? Or that you saw somebody do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, Bill Morgan should be telling this story. Yes, he would have far many more stories husband. than I do. I, I was a very quiet little girl, and I didn't do anything. I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. I didn't do any crazy things. I remember one of our girlfriends, though. She knew how to, she was a rancher and still is in Colorado. <laughs> her name was Georgia Buffum, and she, they called her Gabby. But she was wonderful, and she knew how to do stuff. And she used to go out to the farms in the spring. This is really wacky, you guys. And she would help them doctor their cows. Do you know what calves? Do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. This, anyway, she would come home with the um, testicles of the little bulls, and she would fry them up, and she would make people taste them. And Barbie got well, sick. I, th I the think girl that was with us. I think today. that. Well, she, that was just Gabby. Well, that Barbie had that at home, though. She, oh, did she? Yes, oh, she well, had anyway. That but anyway, she, she was. She just yeah. did things that nobody else did, and and she was just a special gal, and still is. She that still was something that was, was on our menu at home. My kids ate all kinds of things before they went out and found out but other kids didn't eat them. But we raised sheep, so we 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 had their testicles, <laughs> and we also funny. had had. Cow's testicles. I think that's they call them thing, Rocky Mountain oysters. Is what they call them. Yeah. They're on the they're on the menu in many places. So there were just many funny things that happened. So I'm, nothing, you know, too out of the ordinary, but just kind of, you know, a little weird sometimes, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, once I have one thing to say. Remember when Gwen and I were dating, and and uh, Miss Rinker, she oh Miss Rinker was fun. She was that 
the gym teacher, yeah. you know, whatever. Anyway, our track teacher and everything. Anyway, so we, my husband, uh, before he was my husband, uh, he bought a 1955 Chevy convertible turquoise and white cute cute car and came over and of course I could go for a ride you know but I could see it and I could see him <laughs> well this one day I he said it's too bad you can't go for a ride and I went yes and Miss Rinker was standing there and she went well if I go with you you can <laughs> so she got in I got in by Glenn and he drove before we got through we had tons of girls did you get to ride in the back of that thing that no day? you didn't invite oh me. there was about eight <laughs> girls in the back of that car and believe me we went up and down the streets of Mount Pleasant Utah and we had a good time we went clear to Fairview because Miss Rinker was with us when we got home Oh boy. I do remember we were all time. in bad trouble, including Miss Rinker. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, she, she, uh, she got. I got afterwards, I found out she was in trouble a lot, a lot after, mm. after graduation, and after we graduated fine. and everything, and, got, and I got to know her in, as in a different way. She, she got into trouble quite often. <laughs> but I do remember one time Gabby and I decided to make dandelion wine. Oh, yes. Oh, oh goodness. And da Gabby knew how to make it, she said. So we got it all done. We put it and we put it in her closet. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> and one Sunday morning, we came home from church and it had exploded in her closet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> True. Yes. <laughs> I, was, I certainly got it was in my closet. <laughs> so I don't know if it was any good because we didn't get to taste it. <laughs> You didn't like lick it off the floor or anything? No, I didn't try that. <laughs> Suck it out of her clothes. Yeah, I do everything. <laughs> well, we thank you for your time. Thank you. Oops, I to get it's been lunch. fun. We're late for lunch. Oh, I don't Sorry like to be late. late for lunch. Yes. Yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> well, when you're on the bread and cheese diet, you know, and you wear it as well as I do, you don't ever want to be late for lunch. <laughs> um, Did y'all have class trips, like class trip? trip trips? Yes, we had. The most famous was uh, seniors mm -hmm. got to go to one of the national parks in Utah. Which one? The Zion and oh. Bryce. Oh, okay. For my class, mm -hmm. on a bus. And then we could wander around the park, mm -hmm. and there were some of us who, doing walking around, mm -hmm. held hands. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, y'all have. That was a little brave, really, to do that with teachers. Teachers watched everything we said mm -hmm. and did. So to walk around holding hands, just like this, was a little brazen. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. Brazen? Oh, that's really different. <laughs> no, I want to understand a couple of things. Mm -hmm. We as students were not allowed to dance. To dance? To dance with each other. Wow. Now, did, did you have school dances? No, we no. had no student dances. And I don't know how to explain that anymore, but we were, do you know the word chaperone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were chaperone constantly. So, in a class, I don't know, I didn't go visit classes, so I don't know if you sit in 
a desk anymore. Um, we have like tables, sort of. Like yeah. tables. So As a group. Do we have desks? No, we just have tables. <laughs> sort of. Well, in class, mm -hmm. sitting next to you uh, in a desk, I could sneak around and hold your hand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And if, if Miss Taggart, she was a real English teacher here, mm -hmm. very strict. If she caught you holding hands, it would be... Like hit you on the wrist? <laughs> The year you graduated? Well, I'm Dorit Cox, and I graduated in 1963. And you spell my first name, D-O-R-R-I-T, last name, C-O-X. It's white now. And I'm Robert Kimsey, R-O-B-E-R-T-K-I-M-S-E-Y, graduated in 1963. Okay, um, so how many years were you at Wasatch? Were Either you guys at Wasatch. Well, I was here three. And I was two. And do you guys know each other from? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You guys are good friends? Mm hmm So when, when you first came to Wasatch, what was the newest building on campus when you arrived? Oh, I think it was probably Alice. <laughs> That's crazy. So Alice for both of you guys? Oh no, I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear, I would, the question was where'd we stay or where'd our Oh going? no, what was the newest building on campus when you first arrived? I'm not clear still on the question. So, when you first arrived on campus, which building was like brand new to the campus and like the newest? Oh, well. I don't think, I don't recall anything being brand new. <laughs> <laughs> I really think Alice was the newest, and it was, I think it was built in the 30s. Yeah. So yeah, I think. Wow. I stayed at Lincoln my first year, and then Sage my second year, and both were not new. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, as you guys can remember, what was your schedules like? Oh yeah, I definitely remember. Um, we got up at 6.30, no, I'm sorry, we, we had um, breakfast at 6.30, I believe. And then by 7, we were doing institutional duties, which were the work duties we were assigned, and they were, they were uh, rotated every five weeks so that we didn't have to do the same ones mm -hmm. forever. And then we had chapel, and then we started class. And then um, after, after class, probably the same for you, Class was out at 3, 3.34, whatever. And then we would um, do some sort of extracurricular work. And then Bob can talk about having to dress for dinner. We had to dress for dinner. Yes, it was, well, it was very structured. And uh, I remember one of my duties was clinker duty, which was going around in the coal-fired furnaces for the buildings. We'd have to go down and clear out the burned cinders and restock the, restock the coal bin. Um, and the extracurricular activities were pretty good at the time. We, you know, I played football and tennis and speech and drama. And, um, the um, I'm trying to think of anything Dorit left out, but I think pretty complete. You know, uh, for the girls, the absolute worst institutional duty was called 10-minute girls. And what we had to do was go down into where the dining room was, and we had to get all of the dishes and everything that was going to be needed to reset the table when it was over. And there weren't enough dishes to be able to have all the tables set and have enough that were set aside to reset. So if you didn't get down there early enough to get all of your dishes for your table, you had to wait until they were washed afterwards. So um, we didn't like that job at all. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure. 
Okay, so what was the worst trouble you got in at Law Session? What was it for? <laughs> the one I remember was um, on the day of graduation, a couple of friends and I took the flag off the flagpole mm -hmm. and put the Jolly Roger up because jo uh, Roger Hansen was the superintendent at the time. I don't think they ever figured out who did that. <laughs> <laughs> it was our last day here. And I actually got kicked out for two weeks because I drank a beer. And somebody I ran <laughs> with one of the town kids and uh, somebody ratted on me and um, they dismissed me for two weeks. I missed the homecoming and um, <laughs> had to go home. So you guys had a football team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a football team. Uh, Did you guys just play football? Oh, it was a football the field out here, but out here that we played other small towns. We just didn't have much, you know, small class, so we didn't have mm -hmm. many candidates so we weren't all that successful I think the year my senior year we won one game <laughs> uh, you know one of the differences between now and then regarding girls sports is that it was before title nine mm -hmm. and yeah. so girls could play intramurally but we couldn't play interscholastically and that's been a big difference mm -hmm. big difference there was nobody preparing for for professional sports out of the girls group, I can tell you for sure. I don't think Title IX was ratified till 1972. I think that's right, yeah. So we were about 10 years too early for that. So where are you guys originally from? Tell them about where you came from, that's really interesting. Well, I originally was from Tennessee, but I came to Wasatch from Australia. Hmm. Uh, my father had been working as project manager on some underground power stations in the Snowy Mountains and I'd lived there for six years taking correspondence classes from the University of Utah. So uh, we came home from Australia. I started school at Bountiful High where our home was and my father was assigned to project in Greece so that's why I came to Wasatch, it's because they had to go to Greece and they wanted me to graduate from a, an American high school, which was all good. Um, so I got here as the boy from Snowy River, mm -hmm. basically. I was from Arizona. There were a number of, of students that came here from um, the general area in Arizona where I was from. There were not, at that time, schools that were really good for preparing you for college. So there was an interest in, in getting prepared by families that were there. Several of us came, I'd say probably 10 or 15. So um, what was happening in the world during your time that you joined Wasatch Community or the time you came at Wasatch and did it affect either of you guys? Well, uh, a couple of things I can think of. One was that um, um, Jack Kennedy was elected as president and he was the first Catholic president and at the time that was a huge deal. So that, that occurred in 1960 and then um, not too long after that uh, the revolution in um, Cuba occurred and our, our um, Spanish three teacher was a man from Cuba who had been a refugee from there. Granadillo was his name. That's about what I recall. I, don't, I, I was not particularly involved in the, Uta, in the U.S. because I was from Australia, so mm -hmm. uh, I was not too aware politically and, you know, when I first got here. And, um, so I think those are the events that I'm sure would recall better than I. Okay, um, can you tell us your funniest stories here at Wasatch, your funniest moments here? I don't think I can. There were a lot of them. <laughs> we had a good time. <laughs> we had a good time. I just don't recall one right now. Okay. I think I have to say the same. I, uh, we we did a, had a lot of fun, a lot of activities. I think we enjoyed ourselves all the time and uh, 
just had a great class. I remember one. It, come, it came to me now. In the band, they would have uh, band days at um, BYU. And so various bands from around the state would go and they would perform at a football game and so forth. But we had, um, we went up there and we were supposed to be one of the letters in the United States. And it was the, um, it was the I. We were the I. And our, our uh, drum major put us in the wrong location and we spelled unite or untied the untied <laughs> states and she was just as cool as she could be she she had marched us in somehow she realized the error and she just marched us out of formation and put us back to where we were supposed to be <laughs> so was, was there any like fun spots on campus or fun places to hang around that everyone that was like the hangout spot on campus or around well, Tiger's Den yeah, was the hangout spot. There's a little miniature to pool table you could play and you could get some sodas and things there and music to, and dance and, and it was not a lot of room but uh, underneath the old admin building mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we used to, that was a fun place to go. I'd eat. So uh, how was the food like when you were here mm -hmm. and how was it served? <laughs> It was pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> it was really awful. There were no choices. It was it was done in um, um, family style, and we had these huge old oak tables. They were painted white, and they seated ten of us. Was it? That seems right. Yeah. I think ten. And there was a faculty person that always headed up the table. Those rotated every five weeks. But the food. Go ahead. Describe the food. Yeah. Wow. Well. Uh, a lot of surprising dishes. <laughs> no, some I didn't recognize, but uh, it was, yeah, pretty poor. A lot of potatoes, a lot of gravy, a lot of... And I think the students participated in making the meals, didn't they? Some of, some of them some did. Of them Those did. may have been um, paid jobs. I'm not sure. I don't oh, it could have been, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that it was on the rotation. Yeah, but I mean, for us to enjoy the food was not a goal. Mm -hmm. We we just were fed. Mm -hmm. Um. So, did you guys go on senior trips? And if so, where did you go for your senior trips? Well, yes, we did. I uh, I certainly re remember we went up to Heber. The yeah, the Homestead Homestead uh, Resort there and. Uh, they had a Warm Springs, and and uh, that was, you know, we went up, had a great time. Mm -hmm. At our time, during our time, that was the only place anybody went for a senior trip. I think it changed that, you know, a few years after we graduated, but, I mean, it, you were just going to go to the homestead. But it's we liked it. It was a tradition. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so did also did you guys have rec trips? And if so, what kind of rec trips did you guys have during then? What kind of what? Recreational trips. trips. Yeah, recreational trips. No. Right. Just you stayed on campus during the weekend. Well, there was ski, there were ski trips and um, a few things like that, mm -hmm. but no, it was nothing like it is now. And they had the cabin then. Uh, yeah, I had so, the cabin. Uh, so we, some people would go up there. I didn't. I don't remember going up there. I went. Most of my trips were sports oriented, yeah. competing. Mm -hmm. We did, you know, we went swimming in, in Verona, was it? Ephraim. Yeah. Ephraim, or the Yeah, we went. There was a pool there. There was a pool there. Snow College? No, it no. wasn't at Snow College. It was a, it was a commercial pool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so, what was the diversity like when you were here, or the international to domestic ratio when you guys were here? What would you say? Probably 85% domestic and 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. We had people from Thailand. Remember that? You from Africa, a couple yes. of uh, African students. We had uh, students from all over the United States. Mm -hmm. How many people do you still like, keep in contact with when you graduated? I don't know. I'd say probably 
when we think in terms of the class of 62 that we get together with, it's, it's probably 35, 40. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, did, what were your likes and dislikes about Wasatch and why? <laughs> I didn't like the fact that we couldn't have a car. Well, that was. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, that's why we got involved with the townies, as they <laughs> call them, because they could have cars. And, uh, you know, it was different for me because coming from Australia, I'd been living out in the bush and, you know, free every day to hunt and fish. And, and uh, then I did my schoolwork at night. And um, so I, the discipline, the, the scheduling, the, you know, the, having to. Uh, follow a set program was new to me, and that bothered me the first year, I think. Uh, but the thing I liked the best were the friends I met, because uh, I had been somewhat isolated in Australia. I only had a couple of friends, so having a whole school of friends was really, really a great uh, thing for me. And, something I appreciate still today, uh, the people that I met and the friendships we formed. I would have to agree with that. Um, I wasn't bothered so much by the uh, lack of freedom because I didn't have a lot of freedom um, before I came. My parents were, um, they, they had my sister and me pretty well disciplined and um, so we didn't, I mean, it wasn't like we were confined, but I felt some freedom here in being able to just do what I wanted to after school and uh, some things like that, you know. So I, I wasn't very bothered by that. But I know a number of the kids were because um, they were just used to a different life. Um, well, when you were at Wasatch, did you guys date at all? We were talking about that last night. <laughs> did we date each other or did we date? <laughs> we, <laughs> oh, we dated, yeah, we dated for sure. Uh, I had a couple of girlfriends during the course of my stay and uh, uh, I think that was, you know, we went to the movies and just kind of hung out together. It was. Uh, Mm -hmm. It was mostly it hanging was, out together, wasn't it? Yeah, it was different. I mean, it was really quite an experience for me. Coming, again, coming from Australia, I d d didn't uh, have a lot of... There weren't a lot of girls in the area I lived, and so I mostly my friends were guys, and so I fell in love with every girl in, <laughs> in school. I, <laughs> they thought they were all just wonderful. <laughs> so you mentioned day students. So did you, were you guys able to drive around with day students and you know, outside of campus, like Mount Pleasant with day students? Well, more kids from, I did with a door, it was probably very... Uh, I wasn't driving around with anyone. She wasn't driving around. <laughs> but we met guys playing football and things. We met guys from town, from San Pete High, and, and not just day students at Wasatch, but, uh, and, you know, we would drive, drive around and, you know, in the afternoon or something, and, um, is it, you know, it was, there was a rivalry and a certain antagonism that I don't think exists today, but uh, we made friends anyway. Yeah, I mean, we were competitive with San Pete High, mm -hmm. you no know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you still have the uh, bonfires before the games? We used to do that if it was a game with Sam. That was a foo yeah, mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. Football. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have football. Now. Well, that's right. Yeah. 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 We don't really compete against us and Pete anymore. So, how was dorm life? Any trouble you guys got in with the dorm life or just dorm life in general? Well, something that everybody did. I think everybody did. Um, you were supposed to be in bed by ten thirty, and most of us. Bob was probably an exception to this, but most of us had to study longer than that to, to uh, get things done. So we had all sorts of little things that we could do to um, keep anyone from seeing the light. Although sometimes the dorm parents would get on to us. Were you there when the Schreibers, I think they, 
they worked out some kind of a bell that would ring, you know, if anybody got remember. close to the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were there were some creative things. Oh, some things. warning bell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little warning bell. It was pretty boring. <laughs> a lot of studying. You know, we studied and. You know, it's, it's a lot of stuff. We snuck a coffee pot in so we could have coffee at mm -hmm. night. Um, yeah, forty watt bulbs. Remember that? Yeah. Or twenty five watt. Maybe they were even twenty five. We had to. Get, we had to have to to pull this off. You really had to have some really small bulbs that just illuminated your paper or your book or something. That was it. And what dorms did you all live in while we were being here again? You were in Sage, right? My senior year was in Sage. My first year I was in Lincoln. Yeah, being in Lincoln was kind of a big deal. The, those, the people in Lincoln were considered sort of um, special because it was just different, you know. I, I started in Finks my first year, my sophomore year, and then the other two years was in Dallas. In, Alice, because that was an upper-class girls' dorm at the time. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You helped us bring back some. Um, are you recording? Awesome. So, um, what year did you graduate, and uh, how long were you here at Wasatch for? Okay. We well, probably also want my name. Yeah, I'm Matt Max. Yeah. So, okay, I'm okay. Dave. I'm Dave Thompson. Okay. I'm class of 1968. And what else was your question? Um, what, how long were you at Wasatch for? I was at Wasatch for four years. Oh, okay, perfect. Can you spell out your name as well, please? Thompson, T-H-O-M-P-S-E-N. Okay, thank you. All right, um, can you tell us a, like a funny story about your time at Wasatch, something that really stuck out to you? Oh. Uh, funny story. I don't know if I got a funny story. There's, you know, w we did things a little bit differently there, and I don't know if you st still do it, but as freshmen, we had initiation day. Do you still do that? Uh, I don't think they do anymore. No. Okay, well, that's where the juniors and seniors would uh, initiate you, and they'd dress you up badly. They'd uh, make you wear makeup and wigs and all this kind of stuff and it was your time to get humbled as a freshman by those big seniors <laughs> so so anyway that that was probably one of the, the only i'd say funny thing there were some very uh, interesting times here though can you tell us about this at all um well i was just telling the story about uh, i was here when uh third floor of sage had a fire, and that was because we had a couple of our students who were smokers, and there's a little place up on the third floor where you can sneak into the attic, and that's what they did, and they were smoking up there, and some of the ashes got into some of the lint and stuff in the floor and started a fire in the floor, and that was a very exciting time for us, wow. but... Uh, but I keep telling people I was not a smoker. I knew who did it, who who is responsible, but I didn't have anything to do with it. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Awesome. Um, did you guys have like uh, rec trips then? Uh, not really. Uh, not as I understand it, you all do today. Yeah. Uh, now we did have. There were some trips, and so things like they'd take a trip up to Mount Nebo. There was also ski trips that they would take in the winter. Um, but as far as a class trip just for fun or something else, we only had one as senior class trip. And that, for like for us, we went up to the homestead, which is in Heber, Utah, and we stayed up there. But that was just our class. That, that did that and we most of the other time we didn't go to many other places we were I mean there were a couple times we'd go down to Manti to go to the swimming pool down there but we didn't go too many places yeah. um, what else did you guys do on the weekends then? Uh, weekends were um, boring for the most part mm -hmm. 
We didn't have as many activities as you all do here. Uh, now, one, one of the things I did was uh, I liked to go hunting, so I'd go rabbit hunting on the, on the weekends. Mm -hmm. But the uh, we we had to leave our rifles with uh, the dormitory yeah. lead, and so I checked that out. But and also I had some grandparents who lived down in Spring City, and so a lot of times on Sunday I would go down there for Sunday lunch, and I'd take whatever girlfriend I had at the time. <laughs> So my wife's not here, so I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was always enjoyable. But there wasn't a lot we did. Mm. And also on uh, Sundays at that time, uh, we also had mandatory church we had to go to. So your music conservatory over here, the church, we had to go every Sunday to church. Mm -hmm. Even if you weren't religious? It didn't religious. matter. Everybody was mandatory that you had to go there. Um, do you have a uh, favorite memory from Wasatch, other than a funny one? Well, you know, the, uh, I guess I have a lot of memories, but I think the memories are jumbled together a little bit in terms of what did I get out of uh, being here at Wasatch, and I think our class, we only had like 30 people in our class. Uh, who graduated and we only had about 119 or something total in the school it was very small so we knew everybody and you know the thing is that it was kind of like a big family that we had here and it was small enough that we knew and most of the people here spent four years here or three years so you knew them you knew their families you knew where they were from you know, what problems they had. And it was, you know, like most families, you'd get in fights with other people, but, you know, you, you got over it. And yeah, so I guess, speaking of that, okay, one thing that does stick out in my mind, and I, and I forgot all about this, but uh, I got in a pretty big fight in, in Sage. No, that was in Darlington. And it, it was a, kind of the talk of the town here for a couple of weeks and I busted this guy's front teeth and uh, he gave me a black eye and he basically won the fight uh, but it was a very great fight we enjoyed it and afterwards we became the best of friends and then the next day I had to go to class and I remember walking into German class there, and the teacher said, uh, "Oh, what happened? Oh, you know, those darn doorknobs out there! You know, you keep walking into them." <laughs> but it worked out all right. You know, we turned out to be great friends. Awesome. Um, do you um, do you notice a lot of the same things when you can't come back, and um, what things are very different? Uh, actually, I'd have to say I probably haven't been here long enough to answer that totally. Mm -hmm. However, what I've noticed is there's not, there's, well, I, I should say there's been a lot of changes, mm -hmm. a lot. And it's not the same school. Now, what I do like to see is I've been very impressed with the students. I think you all should be proud. I mean, you're doing a lot of great great things. I like the fact that you're uh, doing interviews. I think that's very good. You know, I went through some of the classes yesterday. Uh, I don't understand the teaching process that you have here. It's something I never put up with or understood. Uh, because when I was here, it was more of, you have a teacher standing in front, everybody had their desk, they lectured, they, you know, you'd talk back and forth a little bit, but it was primarily the teacher talking. Now it's a lot different type of uh, class that you have, and I don't quite understand it. I'm not against it. I, I think it looks like it's obviously got some good results, but I don't know in the long term how well it's going to work. But, but I think that 
I think the fact that you have more activities, you know, you asked me what I do it on the weekends. You know, we had three different sports here. You had football in the fall, basketball through the winter, and then track. That was it. You know, you all have a lot of activities you can work on right now, and that's great. You know, I wish I had the, that opportunity, but we didn't have that many. And so, you know, a lot of times I would, we just have to either, you know, work out or whatever. Awesome. Um, um, did you play sports? And I know you said what sports were offered, but um, were they, you said they were different as well, but like what was like the um, main sort of part of life at Wasatch when you were here? Well, um, when I was here, uh, the biggest thing that we had, I, th I thought, was football. Now, uh, I've changed my mind about whether football is a good thing or not, but it's at that time, I loved football. I played football for four years here, and I was the captain of the team for junior and senior year. And to me, that was a very big part of my life here. You know, I also played track. You know, I lettered in all of these sports, except for basketball. I was very bad at basketball. They put me on the court, and I tackled somebody, and they, that was the last time they let me on the court. So. Uh, they, I thought it was a good decision on their part to keep me off. But, you know, sports was probably the big thing here that most people try to get involved with. And, and for the girls, there wasn't hardly any sports. Act, you know, I should say organized sports. The biggest thing they had was being a cheerleader, you know. And so that's actually something I think is great because, you know, Girls like to, to work out and play sports as well. So, you know, and, but we didn't have it when I was here. Awesome. Um, were there a lot of like international students when you were here? Or, um... There were not as many as what you have now from what I've seen. I mean, it, I'm really impressed with the number of international students you have now. Uh, when I was here, we had a couple of students from Thailand, and we had one from Africa. Mm. That was about it. That was about it. Um, it was very interesting. You know, I, I remember the student we had from Africa. I mean, talk about eye-opener for him. Uh, he had never taken a shower before, and he didn't understand indoor bathrooms. There, there was a lot of learning that he had to do, and you know, I remember because I was one of the first students to come back in the fall, and I, I saw him, and I was trying to help him out, and, and you know, we also did our own laundry, or sent it out to some of the ladies around town, but. Uh, he didn't understand anything about washing clothes, you know, so he really needed a lot of help. But it was, we didn't have that many international students. We did have a few, but not a, not a lot. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I should let you get to lunch if you haven't eaten already. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So can I start off by asking you your name? Diana Prestwich. Thank you. Will you spell that out for me? D-I-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, Prestwich. P-R-E-S-T-W-I-C-H. Thank you. And what class did you graduate from? 1958. Thank you. All right. Um, can you tell us a funny story about your time at Wasatch, something that sticks out to you? I can remember this one time we had lessons in what we call social graces in, in it deals with relationships with people and they were teaching us how to to stand and, and to or to, to sit down in a chair and I can remember going to the cafeteria and and this boy held out a chair for me and I sat down and, and I waited and waited and waited for the chair and I, I was completely on the ground <laughs> Tear out from under you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> wow. 
I remember that. I wasn't hurt. Oh, that's good. It, it, it was really funny because I kept expecting a chair to show up. And then I, once I was sitting on the ground and realized there was no chair to sit on. <laughs> but, but that was funny. Uh, I guess the, the guy wanted to know if we had really learned how to stand and sit on a chair. And I learned that if you, you, if you sit on a chair and and it disappears, you'll still be okay. <laughs> um, what's a memory that really sticks out to you at Wasatch that you look back on and reminisce? Well, uh, I feel like the teachers were genuinely interested in saying that you had an education. They wanted to make sure that you, yourself, succeeded in life. And if you had any problems or anything, they would help you out. And, and I liked it because I got to meet people from different parts of the country and their experiences in life. And I, I just feel like it was a good learning experience. Like when I went to Wasatch Academy, we had to clean our own rooms. And then it was understood that we volunteer at the cafeteria, like we help serve the food. They'd hired cooks then, and but the students were supposed to to make sure that they they dished up the food and and made sure that you you, you got the food that you needed. Thank you. Um, when you were there, were there a lot of international students? There probably wasn't as many international students then as there is now. Okay, so uh, first question is, what is your name? What is my name? It's Ted Helston, spelled H-E-L-S-T-E-N. Okay, um, what year did you graduate? I graduated in the year of 1954. Uh, so where are you from? Originally, when I came to Wasatch, I was from the little town of Schofield, Utah, which is just over the mountain from here. So, uh, you were a day student? No, I was a boarding student. Uh, what dorm were you in? I started in the first, wait, what dorm was I in? I started in a house three blocks north from here. They didn't have enough room for us, so we lived, uh, eight of us lived in a house up there across the creek for the first year. In the second year came down to Darlington and then the third, the third and fourth year I was in Sage. Um, so uh, what, what made you come to Wasatch? What made me come to Wasatch? I'll tell you an interesting, you sure you got time? <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. we got plenty of time. It's here. Okay what it is is when I got out of the eighth grade there was no high school in the town. <laughs> And so when I got out of the eighth grade, five of my buddies and I went up to the coal company to go to work, because that's what you did then. They hired my five buddies, but wouldn't hire me. So all summer long, my friends used to say, nobody likes you, Ted. And then I, my dad sent me over here to Wasatch because I had relatives go here. <clears throat> Graduated from here, went in the army, got my degree from the University of Utah. And when I married my wife from Clear Creek, her dad was the superintendent of the coal mine. And one day I told him about this incident of not getting hired, and he started laughing at me. <laughs> I didn't take that too nicely. But then he says, Ted, you know why I didn't hire you? And I said, yeah, I'd like to know. He said, your dad talked us in not to hire you, so you would go on to high school. That's how I ended up over here. And I'm the only kid out of my eighth grade class that graduated out of high school, let alone college, all because my dad convinced him not to hire me. So that's how I ended up here. <coughs> Different times. Yeah, yeah. seriously. <laughs> uh, so, um, so what was your favorite subject? What was my favorite subject here at school was English because when I came out of grade school, we really didn't go to school in the grade school. If we went to school in the morning, 
and we decide we want to do something else, we'd get on our horses or in the winter go take off and go skiing. And the teachers would never tell our parents about it. So I wasn't very smart. And so when I got over here and realized how dumb I was, that I realized that English needed to be what I needed to be done because I didn't know what I couldn't spell. But in those days, they used to take an English a sentence and break it down with verbs and stuff. And that was my favorite subject, to be honest with you. Was your English teacher your favorite teacher? Uh, was my English teacher a favorite teacher? No. <laughs> no, she wasn't. My favorite teacher was a, was a math teacher. And, but uh, I learned my English well, I think. Um, what was the dress code? It was pretty, it's a lot different than what you have. The dress code is a lot different. Uh, you could wear Levi's and sh shirt to school. But at the dining at night, you had to wear a coat and tie to the dining room to eat. And you had formal etiquette classes down there that you had to follow. And so it was, it was dress up every night and dress up for church because it was mandatory to go to church every Sunday. But during the going to school, you could wear Levi's and uh, you couldn't wear gym shoes, as I recall. You had to wear regular shoes. Uh, so, um... When you say church, which uh, denomination was it? <coughs> what was that? Which denomination? It was the Presbyterian Church. In those days, you were required to go to the Presbyterian Church down here. It didn't matter what religion you were. It was mandatory to go to church. In fact, when just before church started, teachers used to go through the dorms to make sure you weren't hiding not going to church. <laughs> In fact, some of my buddies, we learned how to climb in the closets and sage your darn up on those shelves and hide. Because a lot of times we found when the teacher opened the, the closet door, they didn't look up, they just looked in. So it was mandatory for me to go to Presbyterian Church no matter what your religion was. <laughs> my, my roommate was Catholic, I was Mormon, but our rules were to do that. <clears throat> and a side issue for that, I'll just tell this other story and you can throw it away. When I came over the mountain to go to this school, my mother was giving me instructions. And she said, Ted, you're going to have to go to Presbyterian Church. You've got to remember that God is in all churches and you will treat the church with respect. And she, the other story she gave me was pretty good. She says, I've taught you not to go to bed with girls until you get married. Now when you get over there, I can't control you, so here's the rule you have to follow. If you won't walk down the street with a girl in the daytime, don't go to bed with her at night. And so that became the motto I had to follow. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, that, yeah. Um, so uh, did you follow all the rules? Like, did you ever get suspended or in trouble? Yes. <laughs> There, they had a rule, and this is where I really got into a problem. In those days, they had some strict rules on how boys and girls reacted. And one of those rules was when you were out on Saturday, on Sunday, out on the football field, if you had a girlfriend with you, both of you just couldn't lay down together. If you were sitting there, one had to be sitting up and one sitting that laying down. And I, my girlfriend and I went into Fink's, and that was a girl's dormitory at that time. And we were down in the one room, and the teacher caught us, and I was, we were both laying down. And we got, I was de-girled. In those days, they used to call it de-boy, de-girl. I was de-girled for two weeks, which I considered as suspension. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what were some of your favorite moments with friends or teachers or some activities you enjoyed at school? Hmm. There are lots of them. Uh, I think the favorite was in, in playing football because we had a good coach. We At that time we were a class B school but we used to play the class A schools and win. And I think it was my association with my buddies on the football team. Um, what are some of the changes you have noticed just either around the campus or how people act or like the food or? Well, one of the biggest changes I see 
is, I don't know if you realize this, but when we were here, every student had an institutional job to do each month. <clears throat> they switched every month. In other words, you would, uh, one, one, one month you'd be required to go into Fink's and, and do the floors every day on the weekends. So every student had institutional work and then they, they, you just switched, and I think that's gone away now. But what it really taught you that was that everybody was equal. In other words, there were kids that had lots of money, others didn't, come from different backgrounds. But it, by making them do the same job, no matter what their background, it sort of equalized and, and created a, what I thought was a pretty good climate. Yeah, we uh we have something like that now. It's called co-ops, but we don't have to. We just vacuum the floors of the entire dorm. Yeah, or like take out the trash. Yeah, yeah. do that. Okay, but that, yeah. Yeah, so, rotate, but yeah, so it's not nearly as rigorous as it rigorous. Like, yeah. used to Well, be. in addition to that, uh, they also allowed some of us who needed. My parents didn't have money. I had a secondary job that was a paying job, where I went around several days a week and uh, cleaned the. Uh, and stoke the coal furnaces and take the chunkers out. Mm -hmm. See, in those days, the tuition was about six hundred dollars, <laughs> and so a good deal to live. Yeah, it's a big chunk yeah. now. And then, so I'd got a hundred dollars a year for that, and that's we did that. Yeah. Um. So, what college did you go to after Wasatch? When I went to University of Utah and graduated from the University of Utah. Uh, how did um your time at Wasatch help? you prepare for a college career or did it help you in college? It helped me prepare and it uh, it got got me set up. I went in the army after I got out and then I went to college and the key was I had, and this gets back to the question on English too, I had straight A's in math here at Wasatch and poor grades in English. When I got to university and took the entrance exam, I flunked the math and got high grades in English, and I couldn't believe it. But the discipline from the math classes and that, then when I went into engineering, I found that I could handle that because of the way we were disciplined to go to school and study, and that's what helped me all the way through college. I didn't have any problems in college, to be honest with you. Now, you said you went to the Army after yes. Wasatch. So how far between Wasatch and college were you in the Army? Like how long? In the spring, when I graduated in the summer, when I graduated, I had been accepted to the Air Force to be a pilot. But I had to sit out six months to a year because the Korean War was ripening down and they uh, did, I had to wait for a slot. So I chose to sit out, and then a couple of buddies talked me into, we all went and joined the Army. And for three years, I spent my two and a half years in France. And then I came out of the Army and spent about a year to two years working in the oil field down in New Mexico, and then decided I better do something else and went on to the university. From uh, so. When you were in high school, uh, did you start in 1950? 1950. So you were in high school while the Korean War was going on. Yes. What was, what was it like going through <clears throat> high school with uh, conflict? Like what, that? you know, you, in those days you didn't have the TV, we didn't have TVs. So the news that we received was basically Time Magazine in our uh, one class of of uh, history in that, we used to have to read Time Magazine, so we, that's what we knew was going on in the conflict. And then some of us had friends or relatives that were in the service, and so we got that. And so you could see it going on and see the impact, and you begin to realize that, that when you got out of high school, you were probably, if the thing was still going on, it didn't that you'd be faced with that kind of uh, activity because the draft was still going on. So, so you knew people that yeah. went into yes. Korea after? Yes. I had one good friend that uh, I knew. He was two years older than I am, 
but he went in the Korean War. He actually served over there. I knew he was there. Bill Bijak, who graduated from here in Wasatch in 1950, he ended up in Korea while his brother was still going to school here with us. And so Bob, who I grew up with in Schofield, Bob would tell me, oh, we just got this letter from Bill, and here he is on wherever at the Korean Peninsula. Yeah, my grandfather actually was in Korea. Yeah. yeah. So, um... And so one, one of the stories that Phil told me about later is that they would cut the bottoms out of their sleeping bag in case they got attacked so they can get up and run in the middle of the night without climbing out their sleeping bag. And he said that one night the whistle, the bugle blew, and he was running like mad. They told him where to run to. It was snowing and foggy. And he said, Ted, uh, it was unbelievable. He said, I looked over, thought I was my buddy, and it was a Chinese guy running, an army guy running next to me. So there was some humor in some of those stories. Uh, so what did you, what career did you go into after uh, college? And Okay, I, brief synopsis. I graduated as a mechanical engineer. I went up to Hill Air Force Base as a civilian, and, and I became an aeronautical engineer. So my career in, in engineering, I was dining, designing repairs and modifications of new stuff for the F-4 and stuff like that. I, while I was still an engineer, I designed the, my buddy and I designed the smoke system for the Thunderbirds. I did a lot of work for their airplanes and then, ooh, in 1972, they made me an honorary crew chief for the Thunderbirds. And then, and then there was a big mistake. I got a, my boss called me one day. I was up working on an airplane. And he said, this man wants to interview. And I didn't know who he was, but he was the senior civilian at Hill Air Force Base. He called me in his office for an interview for a promotion. And being dumb as I was, I said, let's forget this. I don't want to be a supervisor. I don't want to waste your time. <laughs> he said, sit your down. And then he asked me what I'd do if it was in this job, and I told him, and then I left. And I went back to Ohio, and I was doing a structural test on an airplane, and the phone rang, and somebody called me down to there, and I didn't want to take it, but I had to, and he told me, you're promoted, get back here. I tried to talk him out of it, I got chewed out. Anyway, that started my career in the management. And I moved up the line, and I finally, about 10,000 of the people at Hill, I worked for me. I ended up in Desert Storm. I, I controlled, it was my director, that we controlled all the munitions that went into Desert Storm. I had 11 ships, and we were shipping bombs all over there, controlled all of the cameras that went on airplanes all the wheels and brakes, so I sort of ended up in that world, and that's where I retired from the first time. Uh, so we're actually down to our last question. Okay. Um, have you seen any of your classmates from when you came here, and have you guys like shared stories? Yes. What I've done, I since I left Wasatch, <laughs> you should, you don't let anybody give you these orders, but I was selected by my class to keep track of everything. So what I did is every few years, I, in those days when you had typewriters and all this fancy stuff, I would have them send me letters of what they were doing and I kept them and stored them. And over the years, right now I have a spreadsheet covering all 78 of the students that went here in my class. I realized we only had about 30 kids graduate. But over the years you would have kids come in, maybe spend two months or a year and then be gone. So I've kept track of them. I know how much, where the, most of them are. I keep a list of all of them who have died. And one good interesting story of this was one of my classmates, I lost track of her. She used to have a bunch of ho uh, rental places in Hawaii and then her and her husband disappeared. I found her three years ago. Her husband was dead but she now owned a hotel off the west coast of Mexico and was still teaching art classes down there. So I keep track of them. In fact, when I leave the school now, I'll go back to all of those that I have emails for. 
and send them the updates of what's going on. Oh, that's cool. Well, uh, thank you for your time. No. Boring time, you mean? <laughs> no, no, it really no, it was worth any time. Just, yeah. just thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, you guys, all of your what time, what grade you're in? Uh, I'm mm. a junior. Junior, junior. Yeah, junior. Okay, you all been here since you were freshman? Uh, no. I came in last year. I also came in last year. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's okay. year. Okay. Yeah. And how it all fits together that, uh, that really it's, uh, it's still, it's still Wasatch, you know, as yeah. it was in the past. And, uh, have you tried the food? Is it a lot different than when you were here? Very much so. When I was here, uh, the dining hall was actually in the bottom of where the Tiger's Den is now. And uh, you were kind of underground, it was <laughs> dark, but everyone sat at it, was assigned a table uh, to sit at, and it had a faculty member at its head. And, uh, you know, food was served. It was not a cafeteria style uh, at, at all. And uh, I, I think you lose a little bit uh, of, you lose some things by eating cafeteria style. Uh, for one thing, you, you don't necessarily just get to sit with your friends. And so you get to, you, you get to learn uh, about other people that if you're assigned to a table and you eat every meal at that table with them, you know, you develop new friendships that you might not otherwise. Uh, and of course they, they taught us table manners and, you know, that sort of thing that was uh, that was formative, but uh, but certainly the food now is is probably better than it was then. It was just kind of steak and potatoes. But uh. yeah, and while you were attending, was there as many was there as much diversity? Were there a lot of foreign students, or is it much different than today? Well, of course, there's uh, there are many more international students now than there were then, but there were some. Uh, we had uh, a, a handful of international students. There were some students from Thailand. Uh, we had one student from Africa. Uh, I, off the top of my head, I don't recall where else. There, there was a German student, uh, but not 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 like today, where there's you know half of the school is international. And uh, what was your dorm experience like? Were you in one of the dorms here still? Well, of course, I, my first two years I was in Darlington and my next two years were, I was in Sage. That was the, at that time, that was the boys' dorms for freshmen, sophomores, and Sage. For and two so years did you have it where you stayed two years in a dorm? Yes. And did you guys, uh, how did you handle responsibilities like cleaning? <laughs> Everyone had a job. Uh, there was no maintenance department because the kids did all of the maintenance. We got up at six o'clock in the morning and before we ate breakfast we had an hour worth of institutional work. I mean we were we did a lot of a lot of really hard work. Right. And so like basically how we have it today, which is kinda of similar, it's not nearly as hard. We have some people who do some of the work, but we have co ops where we uh have uh, a set group going every night and it just switches off so you don't have to work every day. But uh -huh. it we still get our jobs done. Oh good. So when you attended Wasatch, did you want to go here or did you have like some encouragement from your parents or some other people who wanted you to go here? Well, a big difference between Wasatch then and Wasatch now is that it was subsidized by the Presbyterian Board of Missions. So it was not an expensive school to go to. And most of the students at Wasatch then uh, came from small communities mostly in the West in the West that didn't have access to good education. I came from a reservation in Arizona. Uh, there were a number of students from national parks, from ranches, uh, from places where they just didn't have access to, to really good education. And it was very much a family school. Uh, a lot of the students had had older siblings that had gone to Wasatch and, and younger siblings that eventually did go to Wasatch. And uh, there had been a number of people from my community that had come here, and I guess that's how my parents knew about it. But I didn't really have much to say about it. My parents just sent me here, but I, I'm happy that they did. Yeah, and was there any smoking or drinking while you were at Wasatch, that, like against the rules that students stayed behind people's backs? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was a pretty serious offense. 
uh, you could be expelled for smoking. Now, it's not that it didn't happen, uh, or for drinking. And would uh, you say there was a lot of it, or a little of it, or how much would you say? Just a couple students, I guess? <laughs> I'd say more than a couple of students, but, uh, it, well, it, it was a little harder to get away with it then, probably, than it is now. Right. And so, like, as you said, uh, people get, would get, could be expelled for smoking. Today, you're allowed to have two major infractions before you're expelled, meaning you basically can do two things wrong. So uh -huh. if you do it, something that's noticeably bad the first time, you get uh, a major infraction. But then if you do it a second time, it's usually when you'll get expelled. So it is clearly different, whereas when you were there, you just not many chances. If you did something wrong, you were out. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I think it kind of depended. I, I don't think it was that cut and dried. I think they evaluated who you were, you know, what your past history at Wasatch had been, whether they thought you'd learned something from being disciplined, you know, whether they thought you <laughs> you were incorrigible or that you could, uh, you really could learn to uh, regard the rules. But... Uh, you know, an interesting thing I can tell you is that when my brother, my brother graduated in 58, and three of his, uh, he and two of his classmates, who were very good friends at the time, uh, were all hellraisers, uh, <laughs> and probably all three of them almost got expelled, but they have really turned in to be really movers and shakers in their communities and in the Wasatch community. They're all three uh, have served on the Board of Trustees and have been very instrumental in the development of Wasatch into what it is today. So, you know, it, uh, people that stretch the rules sometimes, uh, you know, as long as <laughs> they can land on their feet, you know, have, have a kind of, what would you call it, a, well, they're, You're probably not going to get in as far in life if you just follow strictly the the path that other people lay in front of you. You know, if you're willing to take chances, uh, you're probably and and aren't stupid about it. You know, you're probably going to go farther in life. And so, like you said, your uh, brothers were hellraisers, but do you think that Wasatch, like, come here, like, directly help them to become, like, such significant and... Absolutely. Significant Absolutely. No, Wasatch was uh, incredibly formative in, in what we have become. I, I think almost everyone uh, from my graduating class would say that. You know, we've had reunions where we've discussed this, and uh, Wasatch really gave all of us, a, a real sense of stability in our lives and uh, a sense of ourselves and a sense of what we could become. So uh, nowadays on weekends, students can sign up for rec trips where we have various options to go off campus and do certain activities. What could you guys do back in when you attended Wasatch to have fun on the weekends? Well, <laughs> uh, we didn't really have rec trips. We just kind of had to make our own fun. Uh, the school was much smaller than it is now. Uh, you know, we, we'd we hike around the community or outside the community. And uh, if you were lucky enough to have a friend that lived in Salt Lake, you know, you could go for the weekend uh, to visit a friend or, or if you lived nearby. I had a good friend that uh, lived in Salt Lake and I'd, uh, I think every month I was allowed to go up one weekend and spend up there. So are you still in contact with any of your friends from Wasatch? I am. Uh, well, this weekend, I, I've always loved uh, the alumni banquet because you never know who you'll see. And, and when I was teaching here, uh, you know, I, would, I had a good opportunity, to, you know, to see various people. Excuse me. Uh, this year, uh, there's a, a reunion of the class of 63, so I know all of them, and that's fun. And my brother's class is having a reunion, and I know a lot of them. So uh, it, it's always fun to stay in touch. So while you were here, what subjects did you teach? Did I teach? 
the first, <laughs> my background was English literature. And uh, the year I asked Joe to give me a job, uh, I, was, I was actually uh, working as a programmer analyst in Houston. And I wasn't real happy in my job. Uh, I was working for a company that made the world a better place for junk mail, you know, cleansing uh, mailing lists and so forth, and buying and selling information about people, which is more common today than it was even then. Uh, you know, the internet tracks you and has all this information. And I, I just felt somehow that life needed to be about more than that. I needed to be contributing something that made the world a better place. And I thought about it and I thought, well, I'd have to take a big cut in salary, but why not go back to teaching? I had done some teaching before, and so I asked Joe for a job. He's, and the first year he said, well, I don't need an English teacher, I need a math teacher, can you teach math? And I said, well, I've always been good at math, sure, I can teach, uh, teach algebra. And, and so I did that the first year, and then I taught uh, English literature. And then I asked Joe if I could teach Latin, and he said, sure, and so I taught Latin. And then my last couple of years here, I, I taught English as a second language. So, um, what, like, I know you said you just overall, like, all the people you know, like your brother and yourself, have gained a lot from Wasatch, but what would you say is the most significant thing you gained from coming here? I came from a small community on a, on a, on a reservation, on an Apache reservation in Arizona, and Wasatch just opened the world to me. You know, I'd lived in a, in a kind of small uh, community in a, in a culture that wasn't the mainstream, and Wasatch, you know, I just met kids from all over the country and from other countries, and it just it just opened the world to me. So finally, besides like the buildings and stuff, what is the most significant change you can see about like the culture and the community as a whole than when you were to school here? Well, the inclusion of about uh, of the international community, you know, of it becoming an international school with about half of the students from all over the world. I mean, that that's huge. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Thank you.